Mr. Burke, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Or do you say Michael Burke? What do I say? Michael. Michael, Michael just yeah. Michael. Yeah, it's good. Michael, het is interessant. Jij spreekt zowel Nederlands als uh, Engels. Dus uh, zullen we even beginnen in het Nederlands? Uitstekend. Kan je jezelf even voorstellen? Wie ben je? Ja, uh, mijn naam is Michael Burke. Ik werk uh, hier aan de University College Roosevelt. Mijn achtergrond is in uh, taal en in letterkunde. En uh, ik ben uh, hoogleraar in de retorica. En retorica, dat is de kunst van het spreken? Of is het is het kunst van het spreken, maar persuasieve taal. Zowel in het alledaagse, dus uh, politiek of... Uh, uh, reclame, maar ook in letterkunde. Ja, precies. Ja. Ja. En wat doe je hier in Middelburg al van, uh, bijna vanaf de begintijd van jouw jaar? Dat ja. klopt, ja. 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 Dat is mooi. Dus inmiddels ken je Middelburg goed. En, uh... Heel goed, ja. Ik ja. ben er 20 jaar bij. Ja, nou superleuk. Leuk om kennis te maken. Nu zijn we hier voor de kenniskast gedeeld verleden, uh, over het slavernijverleden. Ja. Wat is jouw relatie met het slavernijverleden? En... Ja. Wat, de, yes. Ja, yes. Nou, ik, ja ik, heb, ik, ik, ik heb een goed literatuur. Uh, een literatuur die uh, prachtig geschreven is, goede stijl heeft. En er zijn heel veel uh, onderbelichte uh, Afrikaanse schrijvers. En ik wil vandaag over zo'n schrijver uh, praten en een van zijn werken. Hopelijk omdat, uh, om een beetje reclame te maken voor die schrijvers, dat mensen uh, gaan die boeken lezen. Nou, helemaal goed. Ja. And, uh, let's, let's change to English then, okay. because that's your, your, well, your common language. Uh -huh. So uh, tell us all about it. Who is it and uh, yes. what did you write? I'm going to talk today uh, about uh, a novel, a very short novel, by a writer called uh, Chinua Achebe, and it's called Things Fall Apart. I'm going to say something about the writer, something about the story, I'll read a couple of fragments to give you a, uh, an indication of his fantastic style. And then I'll say something about how the novel has been received. Thank you. All right, all right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Chinua Achebe, who, who was he? Uh, he's from Nigeria. He was born in 1930. He studied English at university there and he went on to become a journalist working uh, for a local newspaper. He wrote a novel. Things Fall Apart, which is actually the first book in a trilogy. Uh, the others are called uh, Arrow of God and No Longer at Ease. Uh, but this was the first one, uh, perhaps his most famous. And he wrote it in pen and he wanted to have it typed up. And he had nobody in Lagos in Nigeria who would do that. So he saw a little ad in a, 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 a newspaper, a magazine in the UK called The Spectator. This is in the, the 50s, okay. like 55, 1955. And he sent it off there for somebody to type it up and send it back. But it didn't get sent back, so he asked a friend, a British friend who was in Lagos, to go and find it. And she <laughs> did. She went to England, she found it, and she brought it back. And eventually he found a publisher with Heinemann, a publishing house, that wanted to start publishing African authors, uh, both South African, East African, West African uh, authors. And it was finally published in 1958. Okay. Um, And uh, since then, he won went on to become a, a famous writer, but not famous enough. That's my, uh, that's my uh, line today. So what's the story about? It's set in uh, 1890 or the 1890s. And it's that period in West Africa where the white people are coming back. They've been there, you know, decades earlier for the slavery, where they stayed on the coast mostly. But now they're coming into the land. And why? Well, they're bringing Christianity. Ah, okay. um, by bringing Christianity, the whole social structure of those tribes is, is collapsing. Okay. Now, this is about uh, a man called Okonkwo. He's the, the protagonist, the main person. And he's a fantastic uh, uh, character. He's really likable and he's a good man, but he's got all these flaws. He's too rigid, he's stubborn, he's traditional. And of course, this is going to end badly for him. Yeah. You know. I'll just give you a few indications uh, without telling too much of the story. Uh, he, uh, there's one situation where he, um, where he's at a party. Well, actually, it's a wake. Uh, somebody important has died, and uh, and he brings his old gun, for example, and they're playing around with it, and the thing explodes by accident, and a bullet shoots out and hits somebody who's related to the man who's died, and he's killed inadvertently. So he, as a punishment, he and his family have to go away for seven years, kind of to cleanse the, 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 the village. 
Um, so he stays away for seven years and these all these things happen to him and he's he's a, a proud man he's a leading figure he wants to become the leading figure he has three wives he has eight children he honors the old ways the gods the forest gods which are very important to their their uh, way of life and while he's away uh, he goes to stay with his mother's family when he's in, in banishment uh, the missionaries start to arrive, they start to bring Christianity, they're followed by legal people, and slowly but surely, some of the tribes people start to convert to Christianity, including his own son, and the whole structure of their life starts to implode, hence the title, Things Fall Apart. And it doesn't end well for him, I don't want to say too much, yeah. but it doesn't end well. Now, the thing that attracted me to this novel when I first read it many years ago, uh, was the style. Uh, it's part of my professional uh, uh, career, stylistics, uh, rhetoric, uh, uh, and I want to share some of the style. He wrote it in English, of course, because at that time, back in the mid-50s, Nigeria, what we now know as Nigeria, was still under British rule. They got their independence around that time. Um, so he's, he's a, a, a native English speaker, even though, of course, his native tongue is, I think he's from the Igbo tribe in southwest uh, um, Nigeria. So here's, a, here's the opening, okay? Okonkwo was well known throughout the nine villages and even beyond. His fame rested on solid personal achievements. As a young man of 18, he had brought honour to his village by throwing a Malizé, the cat. A Malizé was a great wrestler who for seven years was unbeaten from the village of Umafoya to Umbiano. He was called the cat because his back would never touch the earth. It was this man that Okonkwo threw in a fight, which the old men agree was one of the fiercest since the founder of their town engaged a spirit in the wild for seven days and seven nights. So that's how we're introduced to this character by this flashback from when he was a young man, about 18. And like I say, he's a very proud man, and but he's completely inflexible. He believes in the old ways and things shouldn't change, but things are beyond his control. Uh, here's a, um, a dis these kind of descriptions you get throughout the chap throughout the book. This is chapter eleven, uh, opening the, the the chapter. The night was impenetrably dark. The moon had been rising later and later every night until now. It was seen only at dawn, and whenever the moon forsook evening and rose at cockcrow, the nights were as black as charcoal. Uh, he, he's wonderful at setting uh, chapters up like that. Hey, well, what's the name of this style? It's uh, like very discreet. It's a plain style in rhetoric. It's something, for example, that Ernest Hemingway does uh, in in Dutch literature, maybe Board of Egg, you know. Ah, okay. it's, it's like the opposite of Copyrus, you know, with the style figures, the rhetorical stuff. It's very spare. Okay. Uh, and you get, you see that when he's also describing very traumatic oh. events. Told it's very matter of fact, spare style, and that generates a lot of emotion in readers. Yeah, again, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just two short fragments from towards the end, uh, when it starts to uh, get out of hand. His life had been ruled by a great passion to become one of the lords of the clan that had, that had been his life spring, and he had all but achieved it. Then everything had been broken. He had been cast out of his clan like a fish onto the dry sandy beach, panting. Clearly his personal god or his personal chi was not made for great things, and a man could not rise beyond the destiny of his chi. This reminds me very much of The Great Gatsby, you yeah, know, where yeah, the narrator, uh, Nick Carraway, is reflecting on how Gatsby just can't rise above where he wants to go because of his humble background. I love that. And here's uh, right towards the end, uh, reflecting on the impact on the white uh, colonists at the time. This is the 1890s, like I say, it's after the, the slaving period. Uh, does he say something about the, the, the years before? The, the, he, the... He, what he says, he says, when the missionaries start to arrive, the people in the villages have a remembrance. They're, they're shocked by these white people because they look very strange. But there is these tales of them. Uh, decades earlier being on the coast so they didn't come into the 
the, the land, but he stayed on the coal. So there's this, this remembrance, this story of these people. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, right at the end, he says, the white man is very clever. He came quietly and peaceably with his religion. And we were amused by his foolishness and allowed him to stay. Now he has won our brothers and our clan can no longer act like one. He has put a knife on the things that held us together and we have fallen apart. And this is the, uh, and there's a nice intertextual echo because he gets the line from a poem uh, uh, by an Irish um, a poet, uh, W.B. Yeats, called The Second Coming. It's actually a religious uh, 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 po poem. It's a fantastic poem, only two stanzas. I advise everybody to read it. And it starts with the following lines. Turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart, the centre cannot hold. <sighs> Is it from? That's from Yeats. Is it a line from him? Yeah. I know it's from a band called New Model Army. Oh. The centre cannot hold. Then yeah. they've got that from uh, Yeats ah, yeah, as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who looked that up? Yeah. Uh, now I wonder, are you always like, you're really into this book? You're, uh, yeah. Like, uh, what, you're a fan. A I'm, fan. A, I'm a great fan, yeah. 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 But do you use it in, in, in your uh, lessons yes, as well? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. How I used it. I, I taught a, a course on communication and leadership recently when I was showing the students all kinds of leadership models. Now I brought real leaders in and they were all pretty good, but I wanted some, some faulty leaders from very bad ones to ones who couldn't change the character. Yeah. And I used a Conquo in that lesson together with other leaders from, from fiction and films. And he's very similar to a, a Shakespeare character called Coriolanus who is also somebody who's grounded in honor and is kind of a decent person but completely out of control and uh, because the world is shifting and he can't shift with it okay. yeah now what is the relationship to this uh, book and the world like i say it was published in 1958 um, in a Guardian, uh, the Guardian's a British newspaper, in a review uh, about 20 years ago of the best uh, English language books, it uh, made it into the top 100. Um, but in 2015, there was a, um, uh, a survey done by Time magazine and uh, Goodreads, and there they had it number 20 in the top 100. Okay. And it was above novels like uh, Mrs. Dalloway and To the Lighthouse by, uh, by Virginia Woolf and Passage to India, Ian Forster. Um, and the most recent one I could find, because I want to be completely up to date, uh, the Encyclopedia Britannica uh, listed last month on the 23rd of June, so very short recently, the 12 best novels ever written. Wow, that's okay. a, really a statement. Yes. Uh, and, that, 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 and Things that, that, Fall Apart is in there with the likes of Anna Karenina, The Great Gatsby, A Hundred Years of Solitude, I know them all. Don Quixote, Jane Eyre. Uh, so this is the first in the list that I don't know, so everybody yes. should read this. Everybody <laughs> should read this yeah. book. It's, I can say, it's, uh, you can read it in a couple of days. Yeah. It's fantastic. And, and, and so sorry that I interrupted, sure. has it been translated in, into it Dutch? It has indeed. And veil fault out ain. Okay, oh, well that's good to know because and some it's people here in the library. All right. Veil fault out ain. Nou, helemaal fantastisch. Dan, yeah. uh, dan schakelen we nu weer terug naar het Nederlands. Yeah, en, uh, <laughs> zeker. Maar je, je, je vertelt er mooi over. Het uh, klinkt uh, heel uitnodigend. Yeah. En, uh, het is weer een beetje anders. Hè? Want de meeste boeken die we nu hebben besproken gingen echt over de slavernijtijd. Klopt. Dit is er net wat na, maar dit is, dit interessant. Is een, interessant. Dit is een andere situatie van uh, een mens uit het westen die, die toch... Uh, uh, hun stempel drukken op de mens van Afrika en eigenlijk alles veranderen in een, in een negatieve uh, manier. Ja, ja. Eigenlijk. Ja, nou interessant. Dank je wel ja. voor je tijd en uh, Graag om het leuk om kennis te maken. Tot ja, lees het boek iedereen, het is geweldig. Afrika, wat is